Okay, so on to chapter three. So just a little review. Uh, remember, we've talked about the main three shapes of bacteria. So yeah, get used to using this terminology, um, especially when you start doing lab reports where you are gonna be looking at bacteria. Um, so always try to use the term cocci, which means round bacteria. Um, and then of course we have our rod shape and then also spirals. And so in lab, um, we are gonna be seeing only cocci and rods because remember spiral shaped bacteria um, tend to cause sexually transmitted infections. So obviously the key to microbiology is using a microscope. Okay, and there are two main characteristics of microscopes. Um, they have to magnify something. Okay, duh, I think we knew that. But also they have something called resolution or resolving power. And I'll get to that in just a couple of slides. So magnification of an image only happens when visible light waves pass through a lens that is curved. So even if you've ever seen like a, a you know, a big magnifying glass, um, you'll notice that the lenses have a curve to them. And the image that you're looking at on the microscope is enlarged to a particular degree, which we call the power of magnification. Um, so I often write that as a number and then an X next to it, okay? So the X refers to how many times the image is being magnified. So here's your typical microscope um, that those of you um, who were in lab last week have already worked with. Those of you um, in lab this week, um, you'll be dealing with those. So um, I'm not gonna ask you to know every part of the microscope, but there are um, a few parts that I want you to be aware of. So the ones um, that we're gonna go through are the ocular lenses, the objective lenses, the stage, um, the iris diaphragm, which is a lever underneath the stage, um, and then the coarse adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob. Um, I also pointed these knobs out to you that are underneath the stage, and that's how you move the slide back and forth and right, uh, right and left and then towards you and away from you. It allows you to look um, across the entire slide. So here are the parts that I want you to know. So the ocular lenses are the lenses that are closest to your eye. And for our microscope that we use in lab, um, they always Im uh, magnify the image 10 times, okay? So um, the power of magnification for the ocular lenses is always 10. And then in microbiology, we use two additional objective lenses. And so the low power lens, which is the shorter, stubbier one, has a magnification power of four. And then the high power, which is also called the oil immersion lens, has a power of magnification of 100. The stage is the platform that holds the slide. Okay, so that right there is the stage. The iris diaphragm is the main way that we can control the amount of light that reaches the sample. Um, so you'll notice that the light comes up here and then your slide is right across here. And so under here is a little lever that goes from right to left and that's the iris diaphragm. So if it's cranked all the way to the right, no light is coming through. If it's cranked all the way to the left, you have maximum light coming through. And then we have our two knobs on the side. So the larger knob is called the course adjustment knob, which moves the stage up and down in very large increments that your eye can see. And then the fine adjustment knob moves the stage up and down in very small increments. So it's still moving the stage up and down, but the, um, the way it's moving it is so small that you can't detect it with just, you know, uh, the naked eye looking at that. And remember, as I pointed out in the lab, microscopy is a super individual skill simply because all of our eyeballs are different. They all have different prescriptions, um, you know, amount of nearsightedness or astigmatism. Um, so it's really kind of an individual thing. So for example, I usually never have to use the fine adjustment knob, but a lot of you may use it quite a bit. And it's just because our eyes are different. So 
one of the things that I will ask you for on lab reports when you're looking at samples is to give me the total power of magnification that you are using to look at that sample. And so the way to come up with the total power of magnification is by multiplying together the ocular, which is always 10 times, and then whatever objective you are using, okay? So the total power of magnification when you're using the low power objective is four times the ocular, which is 10. So the total power when you're looking under low power is 40 times, and the total power when you're looking under the high power or oil immersion lens is 100 times 10, which is the ocular. So the total power is 1,000 times. So before I had mentioned magnification and resolution. Okay, so resolution is defined as the ability to distinguish two adjacent objects or points from one another that are, so adjacent means that they're side by side. Um, so think of it this way, and if you've ever had this experience, okay, I've noticed as I get older, I don't enjoy driving at night as much. Um, so it, let's say I'm on Highway 30, okay, which for parts of Highway 30, it's a two-lane road. And way off in the distance, I can see a light coming towards me, which I assume is a vehicle, okay? But it appears as just a single light. And as it comes closer and closer, the light starts to differentiate itself into not one single light, but two headlights, okay? So being able to see those two headlights is because of the resolving power of my eyes, okay? So resolution allows you to see things that are magnified, but also see them as completely separate objects, okay? And your microscopes having resolution is what allows you to see individual bacterial cells that are right next to each other instead of just a big blob. Um, you know, being able to see individual cocci or individual rods instead of just a huge amorphous kind of blob of bacteria. So yeah, we definitely need resolution in addition to magnification. Okay, last part of the puzzle when you're using your microscope, and remember, the microscopes that you're using in lab are the, you know, pretty much the same microscope that are used in, you know, any type of medical lab, hospital lab, diagnostic lab, um, because they do allow you to differentiate between the main types of bacteria. So last piece of the puzzle is what we refer to as refraction or refractive index. And refractive index simply refers to how light is bent as it passes through whatever it happens to be passing through, whatever medium. So for example, light is bent differently um, as it passes through glass as opposed to passing through air or as opposed to passing through water. So what we do in the micro lab is we use oil and it's a sp specific type of oil called immersion oil and it is um, you know mixed or calculated to have the exact same refractive index or light bending properties as glass and what this does is a couple of things first of all we don't want to go ramming that high power objective lens into our glass slide because they're both glass and that's going to crack the lens so the oil provides a little bit of cushion but the main thing it does is it prevents light from being bent or refracting as it passes through the slide, okay? So it basically looks like this. So if you don't add oil, okay, so here's your image on the slide, what's gonna happen is some of the light is gonna get bent backwards, some of it's gonna get bent off to the side, some of it is still gonna make it up into the lens, but when you look at your bacteria under high power, you're gonna see an image that looks really fuzzy, almost like you're looking through fog or smoke. You'll kinda of see it, but it's not very clear. When you add oil, it prevents all of this. And so all of the light gets sent up into the objective and you get a beautiful clear image, okay? So keep this in mind when we start looking at bacteria in lab three, 
that if your image looks slightly fuzzy at all, all you have to do usually is add another little drop of oil and boom, it's gonna look much, much clearer, okay? So the oil basically has the exact same light bending properties as the glass in the slide and the glass in the lens. And so it fools the microscope into thinking that, oh, this is all glass and the image looks beautiful and clear. So the resolution of the light microscope, and that's the name of the microscope that you're using in lab. It's just, you know, called the light microscope. Um, so it allows us to see anything. And I know the example that they give here are frog eggs. Okay, I've never seen frog eggs, so I don't know what they look like. Um, but the light microscope, it allows us to see bigger, more complex cells. And so those of you who have taken A and P before, these are the types of cells that you were looking at. And yeah, they were probably, you know, a lot easier to focus in on simply because they're much larger and much more complex. Below that is where we're gonna see organelles, you know, like mitochondria, nucleus that you could see in larger cells, but also it's gonna allow us to see most bacteria. And by that, I mean like 99.9% .9 of bacteria. There are some bacteria that are actually really, really small. I mean, like down in the realm of viruses, which we're never going to be able to see with the light microscope. Um, but thankfully, those are few and far between. We'll talk more about those, which are called mycoplasmas in chapter four. Okay, so you're going to be able to see most bacteria on your microscope. It's still gonna be small though. They're gonna end up looking um, a lot of times like little teeny tiny jelly beans. So, um, you know, they're not gonna appear gigantic, but we are able to see them. And that's why most hospitals, medical labs use the type of microscope that you are using in lab. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and then we'll continue on in the next video. Thank you.